Good morning to you. Since this is the uh, first video of the year, I want to take a special privilege of wishing you a happy and joyous and fruitful and uh, grace-filled new year. Also, this morning, the devotional is intended to give you a sort of uh, new grasp on something that I think is possible for you and will empower your lives. The title of the devotional this morning is, Here is the Key. If you are searching for a new and more powerful way of living in 2021, I have for you the key. The key is contained in the teachings of Jesus which is well known and often quoted, eh, but the secret or key is hidden inside or within the teaching. You know, this is true in any number of instances. You read a scripture and you kind of understand it and you think, well, I know what that means. And then you begin digging and you think, oh, there's more to this. And so it's like peeling something and getting to the inside and finding richer, deeper, sweeter, one or more, more wonderful things. And that's the way with this teaching. Let me invite you to look at this key from a specific vantage point. That is the question of power, both using your power and not giving your power away to someone. To open the subject up just a little further, one of the keys to Jesus' life, his ministry, and his mission has to do with these two same matters that I've just mentioned. Jesus' use of his powers and Jesus' refusal to give his power away to others. This is so key to seeing Jesus as he really is. In Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Jesus points out some ways of dealing with our enemies in an altogether new and personally confrontive way. In Matthew 5, 38, Jesus talks about revenge and how to treat your enemies. In verse 41, according to the New Living Translation, Jesus says, quote, if a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles, unquote. Why does Jesus give such difficult and hard and onerous advice in this kind of situation? Are you ready to hear the real reason? Because Jesus does not want how we are treated by someone to determine how we treat them. If I am badly if I am treated badly, misused, belittled, and abused, I have a choice set before me. I can choose to retaliate in kind to hurt the other person as I have been hurt. I can seek to exact revenge for exactly what has been done to me. Or to be specific, I can allow the other person's treatment of me to determine the kind of person that I'm going to be and exactly what I'm going to do. After all, doesn't the Bible say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Well, yes, it does. And to that, Jesus says, but I say to you, and here is the key. I can decide and choose to act in ways that I personally decide to live. And I do this in specific instances all the way through my life. When someone says something bad about me, I can retaliate and say bad things about them. But I can decide to not let how I've been treated determine how I treat them. There, in a moment, an instant of awareness there really is, this is the key, 
that I have a choice before me. How will I act in a specific situation? Will I retaliate? Will I be in revenge? Or will I decide, no, I don't want to be that kind of person. With God's help and with Christ's help, I want to be the, per the kind of person that I know God and Christ want me to be. You will discover that living in this non-revengeful, non-retaliation way will occur often in your life, possibly from people that you love and care for and who care and love you. To love in this, live in this new way will give you a new feeling of power in your life. And that's exactly what Jesus intends. That's why he offers you and me this secret, hidden key within this teaching. Let me close by reading a quote from Father John Powell's book, Why Am I Afraid to Tell You Who I Am? And then I want to offer you a principle, sort of condensing this, a principle for you to live by in 2021. Listen to the story as it comes from Powell's book. The fully human person is an actor, not a reactor. The syndicated columnist Sidney Harris tells the story of accompanying his friend to a newsstand. The friend greeted the newsman very courteously, but in return received gruff and discourteous service. Accepting the newspaper which was shoved rudely in his direction, the friend of Harris politely smiled and wished the newsman a nice weekend. As the two, friend, two friends walked down the street, the columnist asked, does he always treat you so rudely? Yes, unfortunately he does. And are you always so polite and friendly to him? Yes, I am. Why are you so nice to him when he is so unfriendly to you? Because I don't want him to decide how I'm going to act. The suggestion is that the fully human person is his own person, that he is not at the mercy of all the pettiness, the meanness, the impatience, and the anger of others. Atmospheres do not change him as much as he transforms them. And I want to place before you a way for you to live this key and principle out. I'll repeat it twice. I think this is one of the most powerful things I have ever discovered. You are not responsible for how the other person treats you, but you are responsible for how you treat the other person. Let me read it again. You are not responsible for how the other person treats you, but you are responsible for how you treat the other person. May Christ give you a new kind of power. May Jesus empower you to live the kind of life, a non-revengeful, non-retaliatory, productive life in 2021. I hope you'll do that. And I know with all my heart that Christ will help you to do that.